So you know that if you ever need to know about a book, you're looking for a good read, whether you're an adult or a student, who's the go-to person? She's speaking this morning. Let's welcome her. I can either see you or I can see my words. So we got to see the words this morning. <laughs> okay. Good morning, my dears. Dr. Erickson asked me to talk to you about diversity, I think, because he knows that it's something that I think about all the time when I think about you and when I think about the library and I think about my job. In this room are more than 200 people. And some of the ways that we're diverse you can see, and much of our diversity is not easy to notice. Some of us have medium brown skin or dark brown skin or light brown skin. We can see that. Some of us live with a mom and a dad or two dads or we have parents and step parents. Some of us eat dinner with our families almost every night and some don't. Some of us have never been outside of the United States and some of us were born in another country. We can't see those differences. But what I know about learning is that each of us has to feel comfortable before our brains are ready to learn. So what does that mean, feel comfortable, <clears throat> when you come to the library? Part of what it means is that when I read to you, or I put books on display, or I send a pile of books to your classroom, you have to feel that you are somewhere in those books. That's my library when I was growing up. When I was your age, I read all the time. We were allowed to take out eight library books at one time from my public library in San Francisco, and my sister Grania and I had a plan one summer to read all the fiction in the West Portal Library Children's Room. <laughs> and that's, that's the West Portal Library Children's Room. We started with the authors whose names began with A, and she would take out the first eight books, and I would take out the next eight books, and we would share those, and four or five days later, we would return that big pile, and we would take out the next 16 books. We didn't finish, <laughs> and we didn't even get to the letter M, but that summer we read a lot of books. <laughs> and I saw myself in some of those books. I saw myself in a series of books by Sidney Taylor. The first one is called All of a Kind Family, and I was in that book because it was about a family of girls, and we had six girls in my family. <laughs> So I loved reading books about big families because lots of things happened in those books that happened in my house. The mom in All of a Kind Family had a lot of tricks for getting her children to help, and my mom did too. <laughs> now, when I put books on display in the library or put them on the tables for the kindergartners to choose, I try to make sure that there are books like that, books for you to see yourself the way I did in All of a Kind Family. But those kids in All of a Kind Family they were growing up in New York City more than 100 years ago, and their family was Jewish. My family's not Jewish, so the way I learned all my Jewish holidays was in those books. I can tell you about Passover and Rosh Hashanah and Sukkot and what the Sabbath might look like in some Orthodox families. So I hope after you're comfortable, you'll also read about things that you've never heard of. I was just in Denver, where I was the chair of a committee of librarians working to decide which of the thousands of books published last year were the absolute best. Which ones should you read? Which ones should I buy for the library? My family room is a mess with the piles of books we had to consider. So I've already donated 15 boxes of books and this is what it looks like. <laughs> So, yeah, and that's our committee. We were looking for books with the absolute best writing and skillful illustration, but we were also thinking about which ones will connect with you and which ones will help you feel what it might be like to be somebody different. So one book that we talked about is titled Sparkle Boy. It's about a girl whose little brother loves to dress up in sparkly clothes and wants to try nail polish. The girl is really embarrassed, and she's afraid of being teased or that people will tease her brother. Some of you might know what it feels like to be embarrassed by your little brother or sister. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us might know what it feels like to like to dress up and be fancy. <laughs> Some of us 
don't have a personal connection to that story until we read it and we feel the feelings of the little girl telling the story. When I was thinking about what books belong on our list, I was thinking about you, and I was thinking about children I don't know who go to school in Charlottesville or Merced or Des Moines. Their librarians and teachers use the lists that we publish, these notable book lists, to decide what to read to their students. I want to make sure that there are really good books about children as diverse as you are. So there's one other very important part of these book discussions in Denver that I know makes a difference to a lot of children. When we're talking about the books, publishers, editors, librarians, and even authors are there listening. The librarians learn about how to look at books. So I hope when we mention diversity, they go back to their libraries and think about the diversity in their own communities and in the world. Publishers hear us, so when we say, I wish I had more books about biracial children or about children growing up without both a mom and a dad. They hear that. Or I think that Brian Floca, the illustrator of The Princess and the Crocodile, that book that came out this in 2017, I think he missed an opportunity when he illustrated this book with a curly-haired Western European princess. <laughs> sure, she's spunky and independent, but there are princesses in China and North Africa and Mayan princesses. Why not expand our idea of princess instead of showing us the princess that we expect? I know that editors and authors and publishers are listening to us when we have these discussions because I first served on this Notable Books Committee 20 years ago and some of the things that we talked about then are no longer problems. And in 20 more years, the librarians on the committee will hopefully have even more books that help you see yourself inside the book and help you see someone else. And maybe you will be one of those librarians or <clears throat> one of those authors, editors, or publishers writing those books about the diverse world that we actually live in.